Hello YouTube, this is Bowtie Media, and uh, it's another round of it. Some of you love it, some of you absolutely hate it. It's hot takes time. Let's hop into it. Sort of related to recent drama on EDM Twitter, don't be like rude about your criticisms considering the deeply online nature of the electronic scene. Most artists have a pretty good chance of seeing your comments, especially if they get a lot of traction slash likes. Artists are humans too. If you don't like an album, just don't say anything. If you want the artist to do something different, say it in a way that's respectful. Example, I don't like the way they shifted tone from the off drop to the drop. It's great. Versus, wow, this EP is garbage. Not good. Uh, the, the drama that they're referring to here is the uh, recent Mode Step EP. Um, it came out and uh, just people didn't like it. And I think, I did, to be fair, to be fully honest and transparent, I didn't really follow a lot of the Twitter, uh, a lot of the drama. My understanding is that people said they didn't like it and then he like apologized for how bad it was or something like that. Or I don't know. I, I haven't listened to the EP fully, but I didn't like the couple songs that I heard, but I didn't, whatever. But uh, to the point, um, true. It, this is a very true thing. Try not to be rude, but... The biggest crux of the problem is it's really hard to be constructively criticized, criticized constructively and also to talk about something you don't like in a appropriate manner. And not appropriate is the right way to put it, but I walk a very fine line when there are songs that I say I don't like. And especially when it comes to smaller artists, I think it, it's harder to really uh, express how I feel about a song in a way that isn't like mean. And it's hard to follow the line because obviously it's just opinion. So it's really easy to say, hey, just don't care about my opinion. I just, I'm one person saying this, but in the case of mode step, when it's a ton of people over and over and over and over and over again, it's, it's, you can't just block it out. It's hard to just say, oh yeah, I'll just for, forget the haters kind of thing. It's like, oh no, these are the people that actually really like what they do normally. So I, I get it. And in the sense of example, it is so much harder to say why you don't like it in a like constructive way than it is to just say this is garbage and 90% of people will just say this is garbage and they don't want to put in the effort or time to write out a comment about why and say it in a hey like this was I liked your other stuff but the stuff oh not so great because didn't like what you did with that or that but you know what that's all good you're you you do whatever you want and I like your other stuff but it's so much easier to say this sucks this is the worst thing I've heard you say or do so it's just a call to be better Monster Grand has been suffering a terrible case of under three minutes syndrome with the songs they release. It's almost, uh, it almost makes me think that they have longer, unedited, and very produced versions behind some sort of paywall. If not, then in my opinion, it's the producers not wanting to be creative. So, uh, fun fact. So, I had recently went to the Monster Cat headquarters and had a great chat with Darlington just about the music industry and life and all that kind of stuff. And um, I, I'm obviously not going to share a whole ton, but uh, one of the things he did say was that uh, just in the age of TikTok, and <laughs> more so than anything nowadays, uh, he said songs that have like a 30 second intro, people just stop listening or stop streaming anymore and they a song will do horrible. And so just because of having, like he said, artists have come to him and been like, how come the song didn't do too well when I think it's great? Like, and he's like, it's, it's because it's longer. It's because it has this drop. It has, or it has a like longer, intro before the drop and it's sad it's a sad thing to do it's a sad thing that the industry is going this way and so monster cat is is trying its best from my understanding with darlington to um to 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 let the artists have as much success as possible and that I, and he sort of said it in some way that does sort of result in more in like worse quality it, it does a little bit when you're not putting so much time and creating these longer drawn out narrative tracks. And it, it does kind of create a, a lesser great product, but at the um, enhancement and the upbringing of a stronger, more like even more money in the pockets of artists. So it's a trade off. And honestly, personally, I think Monster Cat has the ability to go in the different route and say, hey, you know what? No, we're not going to do this. We're not going to fall into the traps of the of society now and they're the music industry now. We're going to do our own thing. We're going to stick to our guns and we're going to let the artists be as creative and stuff and do that. So I think they have the posture to do that. Um, but from a business perspective, that's not the most smart thing to do and it's a huge risk it takes. But uh, yeah. And speaking of TikTok, uh, TikTok has much as I dislike that app is a great place for experimental and unique music to rise through trends. Through trends. Uh, unique sounds or songs or strange songs don't really get that radio support. Uh, trends can get them to achieve popularity and can get people further into the genre, example, funk or artist. Um, I disagree with this. I think so much of TikTok, and to be fair, I very rarely go on it, uh, is just your, is actually your radio commercial stuff. It's all the sounds you hear because it's so commercialized, because there's so many, uh, there's so many people wanting to watch it. And so the people put out the most boring commercial, like you still hear that, oh no, no, 
sung for freaking forever and it's the worst thing in the world and people just do it because it's popular and it's commercialized. And so I, uh, I, I disagree with this, especially because <laughs> the trends aren't experimental. They're, they're pretty crap. Like right now on TikTok, it's the sped up version. It's the speed nightcore version of songs. They're literally just the songs just faster or slowed or reverbed. So many people are putting out songs that are just <laughs> like faster or just slower and there's nothing different. And it's, that's, it's horrible. Milk should be put in before the cereal, allowing for the cereal to have an equal ratio with the milk. No. I think some songs, especially dubstep, which have some really beautiful vocals and atmosphere, get let down by a completely goofy, headbanger, heavy drop that feels incredibly out of place compared to the lyrics, vocals, and atmosphere set before it. While it can work well with careful sound design consideration, I feel like sometimes they're just a bit too goofy and mindless headbanger-ish uh, for it to make sense in context. That said, the drops go hard on their own, but in the context, they feel messy. Um, I would agree with this take for the most part. I think... Um, so often people, it seems to me like artists have a drop, they have a sound that they want to do, and they, they bring in a vocalist to do the certain thing and they don't really put the two together. They don't really, they don't really weave a song together. They kind of had two separate sections and they mash it into one song. And sometimes that works beautifully and sometimes it just doesn't. And I think there's a trend nowadays where it's, it's not working beautifully. It, it's not working great. And uh, we're just hearing a mishmash of random sounds and ideas put together into something that's not that well, well put together is the best way to put it. NCS is actually a good label now. After a somewhat lackluster start to the year, NCS popped off midway through the year and really changed their philosophy. There are so many bangers this year. Um, I think it's a little kind of rude to say NCS is like actually a good label now. I think they were like they were okay or good from in the past, but yes, NCS has done a huge change in their philosophy and what they're doing, and it is great. It is it is fantastic. I love to see NCS or other labels even um, do a whole like shift a whole shift of branding and philosophy and figure out how to make things I don't know better for everyone involved and so obviously we don't know the behind the scenes stats about if this is really working for them if they're either uh, getting more artists or less artists getting more streams less streams if revenues up or down or all this kind of stuff but we don't know the behind the, behind the scenes but uh yeah I I mean I I pretty much agree that I I think NCS is has done a huge shift and it's for the better at least for the audience for listener as right now but uh, I guess time will tell how well that uh, this really goes. When it comes to stand-up comedy, us British people are the only ones who manage to get it right every time. American comedy always comes off as really forced and overdramatic, and Australian comedians curse so much that it just gets boring. People like Jimmy Carr, Russell Howard, and Ma uh, Michael McIntyre are the living definition of top-tier comedy. Uh, it's fun that you've actually mentioned this because I've been watching a lot of uh, comedy, of, of British uh, comedy on YouTube right now. Uh, Taskmaster, I absolutely love. I think it is so funny and I've been watching so much of it. And uh, there is just something different. There is just something about um, British comedy that's just a little, it's a little different. I don't think America is horrible, but uh, as I, <laughs> it's... Uh, it's just, it's different and it's got its own kind of flair and its own kind of style that uh, I, I actually really appreciate. So, uh, and yes, Jimmy Carr does some great stuff too. Um, I can't remember the names, of the, all the weird names of all the shows, like the 10 plus or A plus, whatever, some some does this, or I don't remember the name of it, but I just, I like watching the funny moments and uh, I think it's great. Rankings are so overdone that most of them are not making sense anymore. Uh, that's fair. I, I'm, agree I'm agreeing with a lot of things this episode. I don't know this is a good episode, but um, there's a reason I stopped doing rankings uh, on this channel, which is ironic because I just kind of did that again soon. But um, yeah, I, I just think rankings, it wasn't a style that I really appreciated in the end. And um, also like, I just, I don't know. I just felt like people weren't going to care for my single opinion on the, like this album, like where I rank the song specifically. And so I just, I stopped doing them. I didn't really care. And I also did find that I didn't know what to write for it so, so much. And so I felt like I was saying the same thing over and over again when it came to rankings. And so uh, that being said, I did restart or do that again with the Bowtie Gang ranks the last month. And I think it went well. And I like the context of a larger ranking that kind of gets... For me personally, just to understand it, I, maybe I wouldn't even make a video about it, but just to see uh, where the community enjoys this stuff. So where this month, so like I wouldn't have known how much the community liked the No Mana Yesterday track. Um, like I knew they liked it, but I didn't know how much they did if I didn't do that ranking. Uh, and so I think it's 
good in larger pockets. I think that's the best way to put it in larger pockets where it's not an individual comment on something. I think it's great in large pockets personally, personally. So I know there's a great community of people that really love their own rankings and love seeing other people's rankings. But uh, for me, I just, I like the larger stuff. Famous artists are almost never good in quality. It seems you can only choose one of the two between quality and fame as an artist. Yeah, kind of true. It's tougher. It's definitely tougher where you have to make this more commercialized appeal when you get a certain size and you get big enough. You're like, oh, it, to get more streams now and, to, and to, to keep my pace here, I need to make stuff that people, more people like on average than less people like because that's how that works. And so there are a few artists that I think do this really well that, that have this commercialized sound that still make stuff that is that I think is top tier that is fantastic but it is definitely harder. I don't think it's I don't think it's uh like impossible but uh, I think it's a lot harder the bigger you get that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> America is the great country in the world. Um yeah. As someone that lived in America for 9 years and someone that currently lives in Canada, I never want to live in America again. Color bass is the most obnoxious and repetitive genre in electronic music. People shit on Melodub for being samey, but this genre just takes it to a new level. Nearly every color bass song I've heard sounds exactly the same. There's no variety at all. All the microtonal leads are just at the right frequency to be insanely grating to the ears. Bad, bad genre down there with rhythm for me. Rhythm for me. But um, yeah, this is the last one for the day. And uh, no... No, I still think Melodub is horrible. Uh, not horrible, but it's the worst in, in general terms speaking. But uh, Color Base, I still enjoy quite a bit. It's not getting as... It's still... It is getting repetitive. I'll say it's getting quite repetitive for me. But the repetitiveness is also not bad. Like, the Melodub that got... That became a, at this point is... Like, it's it's actually bad. Like, it's it's Melodub that if I would have listened to in 2014 would have been like, okay. Like, it would have been like, oh yeah, this is okay. I'd rather listen to some other stuff. If I just kept hearing this same style of color base that's like popular in like a rushdown nowadays, I'd still be like, yeah, this is this is still solid. Like, yeah, I'm hearing the same thing over and over again, but it's like a, a good song still personally. So yes and no, but um, that's it, yeah. Well, that's been another episode of Hot Takes. Let me know what you think of any and all of these hot takes in the comment section below. Uh, other than that, I've been Bowtie Media and I will see you guys in another video.